Fake think, thinking through media. It's supposed to be this one. Oh, and then I like this at the end. It made sense. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what makes sense? Oh, with the um, the his spirit, wife. his wife's spirit. Oh, basically, it's kind of like his wife's spirit was kind of leading him certain places. Well, here we are. Here we are once again at the end of the year, December thirty first. <laughs> Glad we got one last session squeezed in. Mm-hmm. Literally, for the decade. Yeah, for the, for the decade. decade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. So, welcome, Gladys. <laughs> welcome, Ravine. Welcome, everyone that's viewing. I'm Sai Adama, and I'm joined with Gladys Vanessa, Ravine. Just Ravine. Just Ravine. <laughs> just Ravine. That's just it. No, just no, just government thing, <laughs> <laughs> Just Ravine. And we are doing, this is Pick Think Film, and we are currently doing the Netflix film, Klaus. Klaus. So, but before we get into that, I want to ask, how's you guys' Christmas been? And also, what films, what holiday films have you guys been watching? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. no holiday films. No yet. holiday films. <laughs> you know, you know what? I didn't even watch Home Alone. I this watched was, a bit of it. When that it was, was on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas Day. I don't even think the sound was on, but it was yeah, and the day before it was on TV. So I watched bits of it. Mm-hmm. No, what else have I watched? I need to get back into watching films. I just mm. like binge series mm. these days. Mm. Um, Speaking of series, I watched you season two. <laughs> I feel about that. Charlie said that you watched that when I saw him on Sunday. He said that it's a bit mad. <laughs> <laughs> season one, I was, but everyone was going on about like a hype. So I thought, let me watch this. Well, I was like, we're just watching a man stalk a woman, and I, I don't know if people want to watch it. Let me not say, but. Yeah, it just takes a left turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just like, what? And then there's season two. I was like, what next? I kind of felt like season one was better than season two. Though. Yeah, because what can they do in season two? I felt worse watching yeah. the first two episodes. I've watched things. What have I watched? Well, what did I watch? Well, I watched Klaus, of course, because mm. we're doing it now. Yeah. Um, that was the holiday film that I watched. And I watched... I don't think I watched holiday films, you know. Mm, really? I think... I watched. Mm. I did watch The Little Prince. Um, What's that? It's about. Um, it's based on a book, I like a children's you book. To read the book first. Yeah, I wanted to read the book and first, it's but small then, as well. Yeah, it's like ninety pages. Mm. Um, but it's about a relationship that develops between an old eccentric pilot and a young girl, and it <clears> is pretty much about how the old eccentric man is trying to tell her not to lose her innocence or lose her inner child to the world that would make her kind of like very rigid and kind of like, I don't know, doing things because they are essential kind of thing, I suppose. Mm. If like just everything being very like, I don't know, mundane and Mm. like it lacking, lacking wonder and lacking miracles and stuff like that. He was kind of trying to teach her to be like a, a grown up that, doesn't get caught by the system, basically. Okay. Yeah. That's what I took from it anyway. <clears throat> but it's, yeah, it's not, yeah, no, it is, it is a good film, but it was kind of like, it was, you feel like you get it when you watch it, you feel like you get it, but then there's still like a gap in which you don't feel like you got all of it. Mm. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, I watched that. I watched, what else did I watch? I watched, yeah, my, my sister had control of the Netflix, so it was just all over the place. I watched The Equalizer, which was not a Christmas, <laughs> Christmas Eve film at all. Watched Kong, the Skull Island one. Oh, um, I think we started watching that, but I never saw it. That's good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it is actually quite good. I said that I need to watch it again. Mm. Is it long, though? It is quite long. I feel like quite it's a long, long film. film. Yeah. It is a long film. King Kong films are always long films. Mm. Mm. Um... Do you know what I watched again? The Incredibles 2. That was fun. <laughs> You're I watched the Incredibles. Film. I watched, that was not my choice. That's why I was like, I was like you know, I would complain. Um, Friday After Next. Oh, that was my Christmas <laughs> film that I watched. I've never watched it though. It was alright. Yeah, no. Enough it beats the first Friday, but no. it was good. And I rewatched Taxi. That was funny. That was funny. I haven't I've watched that. I've seen Taxi with Queen Latifah. Oh, it's such a funny film. You should watch it. Mm. 
Oh, I have been watching what? Like in recent, not even in the holiday, but before that, I was watching Seven Worlds, One Planet. Oh yeah, with David Attenborough. Yeah, watch that, that is amazing. Love him. Mm, I can't, I can't believe it. Like, <laughs> love him. I actually, I actually can't believe how this world is. How yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. this world is. Yeah. I watched Our Planet and I was like, wow. But then when I watched Seven Worlds, One Planet, I was like, how did they keep on up in the yeah. levels? Have you seen Life as well? I think that was. I the haven't very seen that. It's on my watch list yeah. though. Um, I also watched, and I, I'm kind of wondering why I didn't watch it sooner. Uh, the Good Place. Oh yeah, I watched The Good Place. Um, I've started it up to mid second season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I've watched how many? What's the newest season? Is it season four? Probably season four. Season four. I think I watched all three seasons, like binge watched it, mm-hmm. and then there was like the big gap or whatever. And then season four came out and I was just not feeling it. Mm. Like, no, that happens to me. I think um, it's something that you need to binge watch mm. all yeah, at once. I think that's why after like mid season yeah. two. I don't think I finished season two. And then yeah. I just reached the end of season one. I was just thinking, what? And then in the season <laughs> yeah. one. I was like, how, how did it oh yeah. Is that what the bad place is actually the good or the oh. <laughs> Sorry, in case I did, didn't Sorry, watch it. that was fake. But yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that things. was a bit wild. That's like... wild. I, when I when I um, came across that, I was just like, nah. Yeah, so I think I watched a few episodes after that, and then I was just like, this is not going where I thought it would go. Yeah, and it really doesn't go where you think it. But it was go. such a good concept. Yeah, and I really, I really, yeah, liked the. It was different. Mm. It was funny. Yeah, it was a different concept. But yeah, so since it wasn't as Christmassy of a. <laughs> introduction I wanted it to be <laughs> but I'll ask this question this hypothetical question okay so I want you guys to imagine yourself five or ten years down the line um so 24 2024 20, or 2029 20, okay. <laughs> to be accurate um you're hosting for family and friends during the Christmas period and you you and your partner are hosting so He's in charge of the cooking and you're in charge of the the movies and the entertainment. Okay. Right? So <laughs> so you're organizing the lineup of films to show your family and friends <clears throat> on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. What six films are you picking? Which six? Six festive <laughs> films. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot of truth. The reason why it's six is because let's say the morning of Christmas Eve, the afternoon of Christmas Eve. The evening of Christmas Eve, of course. And then the same thing for Christmas Day. So the Christmas morning, mm. Christmas afternoon, and Christmas... They have to be Christmas films. Yeah. Okay. I, I had six, because do I know six? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no, okay, okay, they don't have to be, but try to make it as much as possible so that we can yeah. kind of link in with Klaus a bit. Mm. But, yeah, it doesn't have okay. to be. But if you, if you pick something that's not, could you tell me why that you picked that one? For that holiday season, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, one that's not okay. is Matilda because I just feel like Matilda's just the good you film all year round. I actually watched it. I actually watched that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually oh. watched it. Now I remember. Yeah, Please. yeah. I think that was on Christmas. Was, good one. I think that was Christmas Eve or Chris, yeah, it was Christmas Eve night. My my sister watched. She wanted something. Well, we both wanted something easy to watch. Yeah, yeah. She just it's put on a Matilda. nice yeah. classic. It's a good um, classic. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's not a Christmas film, I feel like no, you know, it's a good choice. Christmas, for everyone. Nah, it's a good I choice. Still enjoy it. one like, for yeah, 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 actually, yeah. Let's make it like that. What's like a uni- universal films that all the family can enjoy, all yeah. family and friend can enjoy. Let's make it like that. So it's not <clears throat> entirely Christmas, but something everyone can enjoy. I like Elf because I knew you were going to pick Elf. I knew you were going to pick Elf. I knew it. I'm and it's dumb. It. And even when adults don't want to laugh, because silly, they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like it. Because <laughs> my mum's like, we're not watching that stupid film. But she cranks up. <laughs> like, so you like the film? <laughs> I knew you liked it. I mean, I watch it every year, but when yeah. when you've left it for a while, yeah. you watch it. Mm. It's funny. It's a good one. Mm. Yeah, that is a good one. Mm. Uh, the Grinch. I like the Grinch. The Grinch. I was thinking that just now. The Grinch. I was thinking. Definitely. The Grinch. I didn't that first. It's like the right. older you get, the more you relate. To I love it. <laughs> yeah. I think I think yeah, it's true. One. I haven't seen the new I one. No, nah, the Jim Carrey one does it for me. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's <I'm> so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch that. I haven't watched that like the last two years. Yeah, I haven't watched, watched it in a while. I watched it last year. Though. Watched it last year. I didn't watch it this year. Not my favorite. 
Um, <clears throat> I'll pick Home Alone 1 and 2, definitely. I was thinking Home Alone. 100%. Yeah. With yeah. the best man's holiday be too sad? I haven't seen it, so... No. You need to watch that. Have I know you've recommended it. Have you seen the best man? You need to watch both. You First need to all. watch both. Yeah. You need to, <laughs> you need once to you watch, watch one, you're going to watch the other one straight away. Yeah. Okay. Best man and best man's holiday. I'll definitely but I don't know, that's two. not for everyone. It's more adult crowd. Okay, so that could be the evening, <laughs> yeah. When all the kids are going to sleep when they're playing with their toys and stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that makes sense. We could, could do one of those. Um, I would say lead girls because they have a Christmas scene, <laughs> <laughs> oh and gosh. I love mean girls. Sorry, yeah. I, I do so like love mean girls. I tend to watch at Christmas, but I do. I haven't seen, I haven't Christmas. seen it though. Uh, that's one thing I've been meaning to watch. Definitely, you need to watch, watch that it. too. Yeah. It is so funny. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to watch it from start to finish. I haven't seen that in a while. Um, there are others, but I just can't think yeah, of good Yeah, I can't think Christmas of Christmas films. Any other Christmas films? What about you, Saeed? Um, I think I would pick, even though I haven't watched, I don't think I've watched it in full, in total, I think I would pick A Christmas Carol, the Muppets one. Yeah, oh, I've never seen it, but I was going to say, I feel like one of them films. That has to be one of them. And um, I think... I think this is going to touch on what we were talking about earlier, Ravine. Um, Because we were talking about would we um, allow our kids to kind of believe in a white man who's given up uh, (laughs) gifts and stuff like that when we have kids. Um, I think I would pick Miracle on 34th Street because... I've watched that. I've watched it once and I see it. It's got Matilda, the girl. The girl, like, yeah, yeah, Matilda. I forgot her name. But yeah, it's got her in it. Um, because I just like the message that they kind of say about how something existing doesn't necessarily have to be something that you can grasp with your five senses Mm. or something that we deem as important or valuable doesn't have to be that. So I think they made the comparison. I think in the film, he made a comparison with like how we put on the, the dollar bill in God we trust or something like that and kind of made a comparison between like, we just trust. We trust that this is the case or like, let's say we make a comparison between um, the spirit of Christmas and the Holy Spirit or like the spirit of God, that kind of thing. I like that kind of aspect of it. And that's why I was kind of talking to you about how I'll try and, try and um, tell my kids that it's the, it's Father Christmas that you have to kind of think mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. not necessarily this image of Santa this Claus. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to the way I would treat them, I will tell them to, um, view Jesus Christ. It's not this image of Jesus Christ that you necessarily see that is Jesus Christ. It's the message, the word yeah. b- behind it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So that, that kind of thing yeah. is what I would emphasize. I need, that, I, I need to watch all of them old Christmas films. Oh, old. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, um, White Christmas. What's the other one that's a classic that I've never seen? Is it It's a Wonderful Life? Yeah, that's it. That one, yeah. People rave on about it. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. But I've seen, not spin-offs, parodies of it. Because I, I looked at the concept and I was like, oh, people do that all the time. Like, then it's like, oh, I wish <laughs> I never existed. And then I think um, there's someone that sh- he's shown what it would be like if he yeah. didn't exist in the family. Okay. So, yeah, so I think that would be a good one. Do you know what else I'd watch? Something like Mary Poppins or Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's old. They're a good film. I haven't watched Mary Poppins in four. I don't think it, it doesn't connect with me now. Ever? Really? Mm-mm. What about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? No. Really? Oh. Mm. I used to bang that when mm. I was... I had it on VCR. Mm. Recorded from no. the TV. <laughs> yeah, my VCR collection was limited. Like <laughs> Lion King, Toy Story. You didn't you record yeah. things from the TV? I, did I? Not just not too many things. That's no. where we got it. That's where. That's in the day. <laughs> so you have to do. Yeah, struggle. <laughs> um, I would want to watch a Charlie Brown Christmas. I haven't watched that. No, I would want to watch it. Um, it's just Charlie Brown. That that character. You know Charlie Brown. Snoop. Is it Snoopy? Charlie Brown. I don't know. I don't but you know the artist Charlie Brown. Or... No. Okay. No, 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 no. The cartoon. No. Um, but it's, I think it's like Snoopy like okay. something like that, and he, it's just basically about how he's depressed, how commercialized Christmas is gone. Mm. And I felt like, oh, I when I read that. the summary, I was like, oh yeah, that, that sounds like a that's good. That's my film kind too. of film. Yeah, that's my kind of film. I was thinking, I was thinking, yeah, it's a bit me. <laughs> yeah, 
But yeah, so are you ready to move on to the review section of Klaus? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the first question that I do have is what was your impression when I suggested this movie to you and what was your impression after your first watch? I can't lie, when you first said it, I said, is this what Saeed wants me to watch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like, I procrastinated watching it for a while because it was after Christmas. I wasn't in the Christmas spirit. I was just like, I'm just going to have to watch it. And I was so pleasantly surprised. Yeah, Because it wasn't your cliche Christmas film how I thought it was going to be. I just thought, where is this going to go? Like, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. like I said before, I trust your recommendations. So I thought, well, there must be something more to it than just your basic every other Christmas film. And I really loved it because mm-hmm. it was it was not what I expected. I don't know what I expected. Mm. I expected cliche, classic kids film, but this was just different mm-hmm. to the norm. It was nice. Yeah. What about you, Gladys? Yeah, kind of the same. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and then I started it like just before I was about to go to bed. Yeah. Um, and I swear I restarted it like two or three times <laughs> because I was just like, I can't like. Yeah, I time. can't get into like what's going on, and I think it was because I was tired as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I actually like was hooked onto it, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's such a cute film. It is a cute, it film. Is so cute, a cute ending um, as well. Yeah. What yeah. made you want to watch it? Because I, I, when you said Gladys watching, I thought, oh, she's got loads of kids in her family. She probably yeah. watched it because I was like, I like I like an animation and a cartoon, but usually yeah. things that. I've already seen or like not not a Christmas one. I wouldn't mm. go out of my way to watch mm. Christmas cartoons. So I was like, oh, I'm just, just gonna have to sit here and watch it. <laughs> and and I feel like I did. because I didn't watch the trailer as well. Mm. Yeah, it's just like yeah, I didn't have a clue. I didn't, yeah, I I didn't, didn't have, have a clue what was gonna go on. So yeah, I only got the the um, summary, um, the Netflix summary of it, and I thought, oh, that's an interesting concept. That was before when I first saw it advertised on Netflix. I was like, oh, that's an interesting concept. I might watch it. I might watch it. But then. I was at Christmas dinner with um, some colleagues mm. and they, they got onto the topic about Klaus and they were like, oh, that's a really, it's a really good film, isn't it? Da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, I've got, it on my, I've got it on my list, but I haven't watched it yet. And then they, they were just discussing, they were saying, no, it's really good, really good. Mm. And I said, okay, I'm going to watch it. I'll probably watch it today. I didn't watch it that exact day. I think I watched it a few days after. <clears throat> and yeah, I didn't regret it. I mm-hmm. thought I was going to come, I thought it was going to be another cliche, something. Yeah. I was just going to be like, oh, Okay, yeah, it, it passed the time. I thought it was going to be like a past the time kind of thing, but really yeah. enjoyed it. It really touched me. Yeah. It really did. Um, I didn't expect it to. I think that's the, that's the beautiful thing about it when I didn't go into it with expectations yeah, like, no. as yeah. to what the story would And would it was be. quite nice when you were seeing everything like come together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I really yeah. like Even it. this bit when the kid sees them flying in the sky with the reindeer. Yeah. It's just <laughs> yeah. like... <laughs> This is oh, how the myth started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything made sense when he's like, how are you going to write it now? Go to school. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 everything is just making sense. Like, yeah. yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. You didn't feel like that aspect was a bit overcomplicated. Like the letters, it being about letters, that he said that it's a story about letters. Um, them not sending their kids to school, the conflict between the families. Um, I think it was at class. first, because I was like, where is this going? Mm-hmm. But then I think they had to, from, to make it not a cliche, it had to be something completely different. And like mm. with, it started as him as Postman, it had to be, it was more his story than Klaus, I felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, no, it was, I think it, it tied in, everything tied in together and made made sense. Quite neatly. Yeah. 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 I'd agree with that. Um, so this is Sergio Pablos's directorial debut and Netflix's first animated original film. So would you say that this is a step in the right direction for both of them to compete with the likes of Disney, Pixar, mm-hmm. DreamWorks and Illumination? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that was the first one. Yeah. That Netflix have done. Yeah. But it was a good, yeah. It's been a good, because I think Netflix have released some questionable things. <laughs> <laughs> They've just got like... What's the Netflix equivalent of Trigger Happy? Everything you see, Netflix yeah. Netflix. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I feel like. That's why I don't bother too much, like, just going into everything that I yeah. see. And I think that's why I was hesitant to even go into this. Yeah. Like yeah. Because I feel like, oh, there's always a new Netflix series. There's always a new Netflix series. There's always a new Netflix film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. There is, but the this animation, they did it justice. Mm-hmm. I think it was, it's one as well that can also be, there's the kids and the adult aspect of it as well. Mm-hmm. And it was just, 
it actually had a story, a meaningful storyline, rather than just being something silly. Yeah, that's good. That's true. And I think this might make my um, Christmas lineup if I was, if we go back to the hypothetical question. I think it would make. Yeah. It would be something yeah. I want my kids to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah on Christmas. Yeah. So Sergio Pablos, he did um, Despicable Me, but he did like mm-hmm. car- character design in those oh, ones. This okay. is the first thing that he's directed and written, I think. Oh, okay. And he's done stuff like that, and um, um, no, he's done well. Yeah. Because yeah, even Despicable Me, I know he didn't direct it or write it or anything, but I enjoyed that as well. Mm. Yeah, same. Yeah. It was good. No, so it's a good, it's a good debut. It's a good start. Hopefully they go on as yeah. they start. Mm. Yeah, I would want them to do um, different holiday films. Like, then I would want him to continue mm. with that holiday film theme. Forgot, I did watch, also, I watched uh, Prince of Egypt. Never seen watching? it. That How is, you? yeah, that is such a good film. Like so song. good. <laughs> it's such a good film. It's a really good film. And yeah, I just love it. They saw it in church. <laughs> yeah, of course they did. Sorry, yeah, they probably had it on loop. <laughs> literally, <laughs> yeah. literally. Yeah. But Prince of Egypt would be one that I would do for Easter. I would yeah. Choose, like if, if, right, I'm going to watch it Easter. Yeah, Easter is a good time to watch that one. So what was your impression of the fictional origin story? Um, and... Um, because this is a fictional origin story of St. Nicholas of Myra. I was talking to Ravine about this before he came, Gladys. Have you heard of him? No. No, he's basically the saint that St. Nick is based on. Okay. And he had a habit of uh, secret gift giving. Okay. And so whenever he did it, like a good deed, he would give, but he wouldn't want anyone to know it was him yeah. but people obviously suspected that it was him and mm-hmm. sometimes you would tell people don't tell people that it was yeah. him stuff like that and so then that's where it's been that's where even Saint Santa Claus has been um, insp- uh, what has stemmed from mm-hmm. it's derived from yeah. and so now let's say this this film do you feel like it does him justice like the original Santa Claus Saint Nick does it do him justice as to the the beauty of giving. Let's say, you know, when he, the beauty of giving without kind of getting reward for it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it has because Klaus didn't really want to be known. Like, mm. he was, mm. yeah, he was, he was very reserved and very sort of like, I'm just going to give. Yeah. Um, without receiving or without like, you know, blowing it into proportion, like making it into a big thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so it, it did give me the vibes that he was just all about giving and not really having that acknowledgement that it was him that mm-hmm. gave. Mm. Quite he did it from a good place, yeah. I liked as well when they showed, even though he didn't want to be known, he still, he was like, no, I'm coming with you, because he wanted to see, like, yeah. when he first yeah. gave the child and he was in the window, and he yeah, was like, yeah, wow. Yeah. He wanted to see that, even though he didn't want them to know it was him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He just wanted to see like the joy that he's given people yeah, yeah, yeah. selflessly, like it was no alter ulterior like gain mm-hmm. that he wanted. It was mm-hmm. just generally to give. Um and then I think it was nice when they added the touch about his wife and that was yeah. why and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But it was just like he just wanted to like even like with the birds and stuff and him feeding them, he was just a person I just wanted to give. Mm-hmm. So I think they definitely got that across. And even with um What's his name? The postman having to be the one to deliver it, go down the chimney and everything. He wasn't like, it has to be me. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that they made it like a tag team thing because he's like, yeah. Yeah, he can't get there, but yeah. he's the postman. Yeah. So he needs to... This is your job. This is your job kind of thing. I like that aspect of it. No, made it quite it's original. It's a really nice story, yeah. And I think even just the postman himself, I can't remember his name now, Jasper. 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 Coming from his richness. I don't know, you probably go into this later. Mm. Mm. And then go into like seeing how other people live and their struggle and stuff. It was yeah. a really nice story. Yeah. It was a character, well, what's it? Was it? A development, like character development for Jasper more so than Klaus. That's why it's yeah. yeah. Jasper was the main character. Mm-hmm. Um, Klaus was just helping him to kind of get get there get out of his selfishness yeah and into a more selfish selfless yeah. um attitude no it was really well told i wanted to know the meaning more behind that little one 
that couldn't speak English. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I think so, yeah, actually. I think, what would that be? I think it's kind of just hinting at the fact that they still had the connection, even though... There was the language barrier. The language barrier. With more than, I thought it was something like that, but what else could this symbolise? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't know. that. I think that would be my best guess, really. Yeah. To be fair. She was cute. She was. Would you say you enjoyed the aesthetics more or the narrative more? Or did you enjoy one just as much as the other? I enjoyed the narrative. Yeah. Mm. More. The aesthetics were good, but the narrative was, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, 100%. Mm-hmm. The selling point of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like you know the story, but it's, just, it's the same story with the twist. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's just like you're just waiting to see what part they're going to include um, and how they're going to portray it. So, yeah. yeah. And it was more than just one story, it was like his and yeah. the teachers and mm. the rivalry of mm. them two and Klaus and just of the postman. Like, yeah. It was really good. It was her story as well, wasn't it? Yeah. So but she wanted to get out of and she started dipping into her savings yeah. mm-hmm. to give back to the school. And when they all started getting along and the kids were doing nice the naughty and nice list, I loved that bit. Yeah. Like, so you have to do good and then it's like, it's like what? They're cleaning up yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, I liked that. Yeah, I like that aspect. It was kinda of like you see where it stems from. First it's okay, just the joy will bring the kids together. And then the naughty or nice list of good rewards for good actions. Yeah. Yeah. Brings like a what's the word? Service to the, the town. Yeah. Like Which makes them lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what they did before. Just scuffing and feuding. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's it. That's good. But I like how it stemmed from writing letters. Because I thought, mm. where's this going? Yeah. 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 But it was great when it's like you have to write to him. Mm-hmm. So it was, yeah. Do you feel like that theme? Did it actually show the significance of letters by the end or did it kind of fade out after the I can explain moment? You know, when Klaus was like, oh, I can explain, da 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 mm, so I think forth. it faded out a bit. Because yeah, yeah, what I thought as well was that they would start sending letters to each other, not just Klaus. Mm. And it would just, like, bring back alive the whole town in sending letters to one another, yeah. not just for the point of Christmas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it did disappear a little bit, but... Um, it was still strong in the beginning. Mm. Yeah. You know, that's how it started. Yeah. It was strong. Like, I feel like it kind of grew out, not grew out, like something bigger grew out of that. Yeah. I suppose. That yeah, aspect, getting the children to go to, yeah. uh, to yeah. school, enjoy school, to be able to get everyone to live in harmony with each other, to yeah. give to each other, stuff like that. Directly to each other instead of like behind like a post thing. Like you see the, <laughs> the resentful... Um, uh, neighbours giving each other cake and, yeah. Yeah. and, and their face moody it's like give one back then <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, no it was nice it was nice um, so you feel like Sergio Ramos and Netflix they managed to do something original and fresh definitely original yeah. um, rather than a rehash of a commonly known story yeah yeah it was definitely something fresh and original I think that's what I was that's what made me hesitate to watch it because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, not another Christmas film. Yeah. But it was original in like its depth. I wasn't expecting it to be that that way. Mm-hmm. I say the same. Yeah. I think this one, now I just got reminded of another Christmas film. I can't remember how it is in total, but you know, the Santa Claus? Yeah. That one. That one I might... That used to be good. Yeah. I wasn't there too. Yeah, there's Santa Claus 1, Santa Claus 2. I need to yeah, with... Is it Tim Allen? Yeah. I think so. Tim Allen. I remember those ones I liked because they were not as cliche or... Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I think it gave me that vibe as well. The fact that it's not cliche. Um, it's a Christmas film. It's like, obviously cliche, but when with... Um, with stories like that, with Santa, the Santa Claus and this one, it didn't feel like Oh yeah, another one. Yeah, that's one reason why I haven't watched. What what ones have I not watched? Like the. Actually, no, that wouldn't be cliche. Like bad Santa and all that stuff. I just I just avoid mm. watching. Yeah, no, but I know what you mean. It's so silly, rom com ones mm. or two families fighting or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I try to avoid those ones. Yeah. Would you say that this 
this film is already or has the potential to be a Christmas classic? I think so. I think so. You think it already is? or I think it has the potential. 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 I think if people give it a chance Mm. enough, definitely, yeah. Mm. I don't know how popular it is, though. Yeah, I just know. That's what I'm saying. How well did it do? Like, what was the... Because I did see it, like, on the main page when I opened up. Yes. But it'd be nice. And it might take a few years before Mm. it does Mm. become that popular, but it would be good. Mm. Yeah, I think it would be good. I think it would be beneficial to have this as one of the, like a Home Alone type thing. Yeah. Like that kind of status. It would be really nice, yeah. Mm. It's at that same level for me anyway. Yeah. It is. Definitely, yeah. I think because his focus wasn't on Christmas. Yeah. It was only when they had the idea, oh, Christmas is coming, we should do this yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, like but it was more, it, yeah. yeah, it wasn't like, oh, we've got Save Christmas or something yeah. where yeah. that's just being played out already. It was it was like a different story, and then you see, oh, this is how Christmas ties into mm-hmm. it. But it wasn't mainly focused around that. But yeah, maybe that's, that's why people hesitated to what to get their kids to watch it. Yeah. They just want to put on classics. But... Yeah, I think so. Um, what would you rate this film out of ten, and what word or phrase would you use to describe it? I'd give it a solid eight out of ten. Solid eight. That's good. A word. A word, what you use? Um, I don't know. It's <laughs> cute. <laughs> yeah. No, because it was really cute. Yeah. Like, when I was watching it, I was just like, oh, like, yeah. all the time. Meaningful, um, I think I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good word as well. I really hate pointless films, which is I've just yeah. wasted watching mm-hmm. something, but it really, it had, it was more than just what it appeared to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even like the beginning when the dad was like to the boy, no, you need to go out and pull your weight. Mm-hmm. I like that. I was just like, enough yeah. is enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'll give it like an 8.5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Meaningful seems like a good one. Yeah. I think... Creative is another one. I think mm. I would put it. I think it's very creative. Um, very clever. Yeah. Um, very cleverly clever, done. Because yeah. I wouldn't have put Postman. And, yeah. They made yeah. the story <laughs> yeah, nice to fit together. Yeah. All right. So I'll move on to deeper questions. Um, what moral or life lessons did you take away from after watching this, and if you had children, what message would you hope that they carried with them after watching it? There's quite a few. Yeah. Mm. I think it's just that general, like, helping others selflessly mm. mm-hmm. that I took away from it. I think mm. for me it was, like, to never give up on change, kind of, because... You know how when the two kids started, first started playing together and then they went to their separate heads oh, yeah. meetings or whatnot and they were like, this is tradition for us to hate, hate, hate yeah, each other. Yeah. It's been going on for years. But then they persevered through and, and, and that changed and you can then have harmony even though there was hate or something or even like with the teacher, she was giving up and just going to leave. Yeah. Then she persevered, she stayed and it worked out to be a great thing. Mm-hmm. And same with him. Like he wanted to just leave but he became such a better person rather yeah. than just being a spoiled rich kid. So I think it was, for me, it was that you can change or that mm. it is possible. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah. for mm. there to be something different than what you already know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. And for that to be good as well, mm. because I think like the town was scared of any change because they had hated each other for so long. Yeah. It was like, good can come of change as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, especially at the end when everything was just so nice. Yeah. So, the community got together. Mm. It was a big change for them, mm-hmm. but it was really positive. Yeah. Yeah. When you were saying that, Ravine, um, what I was thinking of um, is when <laughs> they said, oh, our families have hated each other since da 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 And that's the innocence of the child. You're just like, why though? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 <What's okay? laughs> but it's true though. Sometimes yeah. you just have to ask why. Yeah. Well, and I think even they were starting like, just because. Yeah, yeah, that's how it's been. Yeah. 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 Mm. There was no reason. It was just, yeah. That's just how it's been. And yeah. I think people, I don't know what it is about people that kind of just stays in that kind of 
it's just been done like this, so we yeah. have to continue. Comfortability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Stay in your comfort zone of what yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. But I think this was nice to see that outside of that, there is something better as well. Even mm-hmm. for Jesper, outside of his yeah. luxury, whatever, his palace that he was living in before, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there was something better as well. Mm. Yeah. I think, to go on what you're saying, I think a life lesson that I would want my kids to have is that even the smallest things can make a difference. Like, mm. and it can go beyond, like, even the small thing of, oh, just giving, I don't know, just writing letters or just kind of giving mm. selflessly can kind of have a chain reaction that you probably wouldn't even suspect. Yeah. Um, like, something small. You might think it's small, but it could make... It could snowball in something yeah. that you Which wouldn't have been able to um, predict. Which is really, yeah. I think that's that's one thing that I would want them to take away from it. Yeah. That is really nice as well. Because it did start with that little frog. And they started playing together. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they started playing together. My cousin told us if we leave the land, we get a toy. And that's up again. <laughs> yeah, just how um how little things can bring people together as well. Yeah. Like just yeah. just like just them like kids playing together. The innocence of yeah, it, yeah. Brought people together. Um I think that's what I'll take from it. Mm. And to live in harmony with your neighbours basically. Mm-hmm. What happened to that? <laughs> what happened to what the in life, I mean, oh, live in do you live in harmony with your neighbours? You don't think so? You don't think we do? I feel like there's less of a tight-knit, I don't know if mm. we have a tight-knit in my generation anyway, for our parents more so, yeah, but, like, our whole street used to play out, we did used to, like, they were oh. kind of friends anyway, yeah. but not if you haven't got milk, if you haven't got sugar, you could go mm. and do that. I know my very next-door ne- next door neighbours and people who've been there for years, but new people that have moved in or whatever, there's no... Yeah. There's no sense of community. There's mm. no one that I would leave a spare key with. Mm. They, if I forgot it, I would knock on your door and be like, have you got my spare key? There's not that. Yeah, yeah there's not that close-knit um, yeah. environment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what it used to be. Or even like on our road, like a few of us went to the same school. So my mum would maybe pick us up one day or their parents would pick us up one day or just, you just leave your kids <laughs> with anybody. Like <laughs> there was no <laughs> fear. Mm. Now it's yeah, just like, everyone's so... Do you think that's yes. because like we've just grown older or is it actually like just really different? I think it's different now. Kids of these days, like, do they play out? They do they not play out? Do they? No. So there is no way for a community to form because everyone's inside. Yes, it's socialising online. But you're not interacting with people to be able to create. Sorry, I just had like a, oh yeah, moment. <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah, so let's say, <laughs> sorry to interrupt, but like, it is the kids that play together that brings people together. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realise that because I was thinking, oh yeah, that's how my mum's friends form. Like you get, get play dates. Your parents' also, mums, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then also like you just meet, like your parents meet up from knowing that your kids have yeah. kind of been playing together. I'm sure together. there's even a line that they say in there where it's like, oh, so it's down to the kids, the children showing us love or something. Or so there was yeah. there was some line that was like, oh, so it's the kids that are teaching us, like, mm-hmm. influencing us. Yeah, that's quite true. What do you think is the technology that we have now, which is what's made everyone like... And the weather's just worse. <laughs> that, actually, the weather. The weather, like, the weather like, is out there. Honestly, when I was younger... Summer was summer, winter was winter. Mm. Now it's just winter all the time. Yeah, <laughs> cold winter, warm winter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cold winter, warm winter. <laughs> it is. This one season, and also just fear. Mm. Propaganda. Yeah, the media's just like, oh my God, your kids are going to die if you leave them unattended for one second. Yeah. And I feel like there's less... Like... I feel like there's less space in a way. Like there when is. I was younger, there were so many parks, mm. so many play areas. Yeah. Whereas now, there's not that much. Like kids there's actually to things play to do on the street when we now, like, yeah. and stuff like that. And it's not like it's not really safe. It's not like the park was like a two second walk, and there would it was a massive park. But now it's just like everything's so much smaller. Like, yeah. But yeah. There's nowhere for kids to play. No. 
Do you think that's a city life thing? Because a lot of people are flocking to the cities and then the population is growing in the city. Kind of, but then even... It was still... It's not been a drastic change, maybe, I don't know, in population since we were kids and kids now. But there was just more to do. There was more money. There's more funding for things. Mm -hmm. I can remember we went to... During school holidays, there were so many free, like... There were so many more libraries. Things. There was libraries. There was Remember weird, when they like... shut down all the libraries? What just, for? Like, a library, like, you know, like books. <laughs> we're trying to educate ourselves. And you're trying to remember them there was a library down the road from my house and they shut it Quite down a few, yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. Quite yeah. a few, but it's all... Yeah, yeah. money. Yeah, because like, the libraries would do, like, after-school stuff mm. where kids could just, like... Yeah. Like, meant to read books, but, you know, it was, like, a chill... It's just fun. Sports centre. We used to have yeah. one, Westway. They did tennis for free for, like, three weeks out of the summer, and you got food and stuff as well. There was rock oh climbing. God. There was, like, so many things you could do, or even, like, swimming for a week for free. Now there's not there's nothing to do. Yeah. You reckon that we might... We might um. Um, see more of those things when we do have kids there might be more of those things that come into our society not conservatives are still in <laughs> <laughs> really? not at all Boris no <laughs> if you're the Tories are still there there's, there's going to be no change <laughs> I hope that they will be because I do like I, do I obviously hope, but... work, work with the schools and stuff mm. and I do like hear like teaching assistants like Kids are just so like they're not the same. Da, 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 da. Like Sad. when I was younger, we were so like creative because we'd just be out there. Like, but kids nowadays, it's like they're so limited in what they know mm. and stuff like mm. that. And I'm just like, yeah, because it's literally social media. Mm. Like, yeah, everything is just indoors and mm. on computers and iPads. Mm. Um, but I hope that will change. But yeah, I hope that will change because even basic social skills, like we obviously weren't consciously learning them, but by mm. playing out and yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. doing all these things, we were socially aware and stuff like that. Yeah, but I hope it does come back. I do try to kind of like have a bit of sympathy for the next generation and think that we had that kind of thing. Like let's say yeah. with um, I do remember that I was always like always inside. Um, when it was winter time anyway, playing video games. But I do remember going out when it was summer. Yeah. I do remember that there being that balance where if it was summer, summertime, you out. I'm out. I'm not inside for the whole day. Literally. From ten to ten probably. I'm Your not... mum's yelling at you to come inside. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. Even when it was raining I remember even when it was raining, you would for still real. try and force it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, actually that was true though. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Unless I had homework, I was out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Just true. playing out. Playing out all the time. That's all we did. All yeah, all we did was play out. It's weird though, because I feel like I was on my video games a lot, but out, out all the time. There was that Every, balance. There was a balance. Mm, yeah, I yeah. think there was a balance. But now there's not really a balance. No. I remember our funny times, like when you weren't allowed out, that you'd be peeking out your window. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be telling your friends, look on the door to open. She might say yes to you. She might say yes. <laughs> oh my god I used to we used to shout over the wall into my knees that but I'm out <laughs> and they start shouting back and oh my god <laughs> good times good times so it's so real. real literally uh, yeah. nah but even oh, stuff really? like that, like... And what did you do when you was out? Just run around? What did you we do? Around, like, play tag, play... Play tag. When I the other day, how many cars and carts did we have? So we used to just run mm. all the time. Honestly. It was good times, man. Yeah. Was really good times. I'm really glad we were in the generation we were. Yeah. Yeah, on the cusp of both. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Literally. But, yeah, I want to get on to something that Klaus and Jesper were talking about. Mm. Um where Klaus says a true selfless act always in, always sparks another. Mm. And Jesper replied, everyone is out to get something. Those kids are in it for the toys and the grown-ups. Well, I don't know what they're after, but it sure isn't goodwill and peace on earth. And so if we consider the phrase goodwill to mean selflessness and altruism, do you believe that there can be such a thing as a truly selfless act? Or... Is it even possible to have a truly selfless act? Or is it like an unrealistic ideal that we kind of strive for? 
or deceive ourselves with? I think it's possible. Yeah, I think so too. But I think you have to have gone through something or some personal developmental change to be secure enough in yourself that you're not looking for anything else. Mm -hmm. You do genuinely just want to give and that's a lot harder, I think, than people think. Mm -hmm. People probably think they're doing selfless acts but are not. But I think it's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. But I think it's harder. We have to let go of so many things, our attachments before it can be truly selfless and just for another person. Yeah. But I think altruism is something that's in us. It's innate in us and it is... We do ultimately want to work in harmony but it's just... There's so many layers yeah. of shit put on us yeah, yeah, yeah. that we have to fight yeah. and it gets harder, but I think so. I think it's the fact of being taken advantage of as well that kind of blocks us as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being deceived by someone else that blocks us as well. The hurt that we've experienced before that helped. Yeah, that because there is that deceit. But imagine there was a time where there wasn't that, where you just trusted one another mm-hmm. or like yeah. there was reciprocity, you gave back, but now there is there is deceit and mm-hmm. lies and betrayal and it's no wonder people... Mm-hmm. I'm not completely selfless, but... I think it's always been the case that you can always be deceived by someone. I think that's what trust is. Mm. As in, like, knowing that I can be deceived by yeah. this, yeah. by you. Yeah. But I'm going to trust you anyway. That is not, mm. yeah, I'm yeah. going to, like, have faith in humanity anyway <laughs> and go yeah. along with this. Um, but I, I think, think it's possible. Yeah. I think it's possible. I think... But I think it stems... I think it's um, kind of contrary to you. In the sense that I kind of believe... Love of self is innate to us, but I feel like we develop so much to the point where we see the other as ourself, if that makes sense. So let's say, for example, at first, the kids are doing it to get toys and so on and so forth. Then they're doing it because they want to make sure that they're staying with good rewards and so Mm. on and so forth. But I think as kids, yeah, you do that for the reward. But then when you keep on growing, keep on growing, you kind of grow out of that need to get the good reward. Yeah. And then you start to see it how, like, start to see the value in it for itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I think it's, like, it it stems from selfish actions, like, in, oh, doing it for self, for self. But then it grows into something more where you see beyond yourself yeah. and see yeah. the other person as as yourself, I suppose. Yeah. And I feel like as humans, I feel like that's literally the way it goes. Mm. Like, I don't think anything, well, I don't want to say anything, but I don't think, like, anything stems from a really, like, selfless act. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like when you go through doing things for a reward or something, and then you see the true value in actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. 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 I think think it's true what he says, though, like, a selfless act can trigger something else. If something happens to you, you think, wow, I want to give this back to mm-hmm. someone or, wow, it is possible for this to happen. And so, yeah, I think it does. Yeah. Definitely. When you when you get those days where you get people that just show you humanity and stuff, I think, wow, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really inspiring. Just like, yeah. there are good people yeah, in this yeah. world and there should be more. And it's just, I think it does, it's infectious. It is infectious. That is true. It is infectious. Because, yeah, when I, like... I think that's why I kind of made a conscious effort to kind of surround myself with positivity, let's say even on social media. Mm. Like people that are doing good or Mm -hmm. people are doing things that I admire, kind of just kind of always just paying attention to those instead of like the evil in the world, like with the news and all that stuff and bombarding myself with like just negativity and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, So I tried to do that instead and I start to appreciate humanity a lot more. Yeah. I will say that. And it is infectious because you want to start doing stuff that you start seeing that, okay, if they can do that, then what's stopping me from doing what I can with what I do? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, One day even, like, it was something so small. I was, and it happened, I think, in two places. I was was on my lunch break and I was doing a bit of shopping. And in one place, I was next in the queue, but then I forgot I had to get something, came back. And when I came back, I didn't expect to get my place in the queue. But the man was like, no, go before me. Mm. And then later on, I went to Aldi and I was buying some food. And I had like only two things with me. And the lady in front had a whole shopping plan. She was like, you've only got two things going in front of me. Yeah. And then the person in front of her was like, oh, you've only got two things going in front of me. And I was like, what's happening? Why did everyone be so nice to me today? But I was like, me and I'm usually so impatient there. Just like, oh, like trying to get to the front of the queue and... At that day, I was just not, I was just, I was just happily waiting. Mm-hmm. I was like, let me just kill some time. 
And then I was like, you know what? Let me be more patient and like that too. Like mm. it, it cost that woman nothing to let me go in front of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even then the other woman in front, I was just like, guys, like, I don't mind waiting. Like, why do you want to let me go first? Yeah. But then after that, like, when I did see someone before, when I had a lot and it was just, they were just buying a bottle of wine or something. I was like, no, just go ahead. And so it does. It makes you think, well, okay. But it was just small things like that. And I just never, you don't, yeah, yeah you don't expect it. So when it does happen, you're just like, oh, it's that easy to be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, something small, small like that, that small. really made my day. And I was yeah, like, oh. Yeah, it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Like it makes a big difference. Before when um, you used to hear people say, it, I was like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it's just a small <laughs> thing. Because when you're little, you want some big miracle. Yeah. You want something big, you know what I mean? Real. But when you when you grow up, you start to see how little things spiral. Yeah. That's what it is. I think you start to appreciate little things and how they spiral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. One, t- I think it was a Christmas, actually. We got a hamper on our doorstep called, uh, what was it from? Um, Random Acts of Kindness. Mm. And they just gave us a hamper of food and everything. Ooh. And I got home and I was like, Mum, but why? She's like, <laughs> why? Like, who wow. just gives you stuff? Because that never happens. You yeah. doubt it as well. Yeah. So there's that. And I was like, oh, it must be like poison and stuff. And Mum was like, that's exactly why people don't give it. <laughs> they just gave us that. Like, and I thought, yeah. who does that though? But it was called Random Acts of Kindness. And they just gave us a hamper full of everything in it. Mm. And I was just like, this is a random act of kindness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we yeah. did, and there was things in there that like we weren't going to eat or all of it, and we gave some to neighbours or whatnot, mm-hmm. and it was just like, well... And they probably weren't expecting you to get yeah, something as well. Yeah, so. but I remember just being like, yeah, they're probably poisoned. It's like, well, I can't... My mom's like, people can just do good things, mm-hmm. you know? Can they, though? Mm-hmm. It's so rare that it's been forgotten, but they can. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, I think we do need the balance, though. Like, then you can't just trust anything. Mm. No, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, sometimes we have to be open to the fact that, yeah, maybe can people can just do yeah. mm-hmm. um, kind acts for the sake of it. I find it, yeah, I find it bizarre how people can do that sometimes. Like, let's say that stuff. So it's not going to come back to them in any way. Yeah. But yet they they still freely give it. Yeah. To, <laughs> to be fair, there was once this time, I don't know if I feel like I was maybe hung over or what, but there was, I was in Sainsbury's shopping and this girl, and I think she had, she was special needs, she had learned disabilities or something. She looked young, but she had money. And she asked me to buy her a cake. And I didn't even question, she said, come on, get, cake. <laughs> get your cake. I was just like, she was, she was just talking, talking. I could tell like she was a bit, she was a little bit vulnerable and she was chatting, chatting away. But I was just like, get your cake. <laughs> like, and then at self-checkout, I just bought her a cake, gave it to her and was like, have a nice day. And just walked <laughs> off and I was like, that's all you have to do. Like, maybe I should try that and just ask someone to buy you a cake. Mm. I was just there buying my bread and she's like, can you buy me this cake? And I was like, yeah, okay. But I didn't, I didn't even question it or anything. Sometimes it's just like, it's just like, I just did it. You're, you know when you're caught off guard as well? And you're yeah. just like, you know what? Might as well. I looked at my cake. Yeah. Two pound cake. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, get your cake. Yeah, yeah, I'll get right. a few. Let's go pay. Yeah, no, I prefer, <laughs> I prefer that. And to be fair, it kind of reminds me of a Bible verse where it says that who, like when I think Jesus said, who out of you, when your brother asks for uh, for something, for bread or something, is going to give them a snake or something like that? It's like, mm. just uh, like all you have to do is just ask and then it will be given to you. And then yeah. sometimes you, it is just asking. Like for me, I think, let's say if I see homeless people or mm. whatever, and then they ask for money, I'm kind of like, okay, what do you want to use it for? Same. Yeah. yeah. But when they ask me, oh, could you buy me some bread or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, that's what you need? Oh, yeah. yeah. If you need it, yeah. That's what you need. You're being honest with me. That's what you need. Okay, cool. But it's like, when they ask for money, I think there's a barrier because it's like, I don't know what, if you're using it for what you need or what you want. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. one homeless, I was getting petrol um, and one homeless guy like came up to me um, and like my mum had gone to a cash point and then he came up to me and he was like, oh miss, like, could I get like, a, like he had some long speech about how he didn't have somewhere to stay um, and he'd been like collecting money so that he could get, get somewhere to stay. And usually I'm just like, okay, when it comes to money like you, I'm just like, mm. sorry, I don't have change. Yeah. I'm not going to give you money because um, I don't know what you're using it for. Um, but I actually like, we, I actually was like, what are you going to use the money for? And we actually had a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just talking about his life, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, I was eventually like, okay, I'm going to give you this money, but... <laughs> 
you've just told me how you're going to use it, blah, 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 blah. Mm. So you actually have to use it the way you've told me. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I promised. Da, 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 da. Like, he actually seemed very genuine. Yeah, like, yeah, no one yeah. knows if he actually used it for what he said he was going mm. to. But it was just like, okay, I'll give it to you. So, mm. Like, my mom came back and she was like, do you know him? <laughs> no. Like, no, no. no, I don't. But no. it was just like, you know, like when you, sometimes it's so hard to be like selfless and stuff like that. Yeah. Because of those barriers that you mm. have, like you think that they're going to use it for X, Y, Z. But it's sometimes like, okay, open yourself up a bit mm-hmm. to mm. understand them yeah, as well. That's what true. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, I think it's, that's the trust thing as well. It's like, yeah. They've taken the time to tell you their story. You have no, like, you yeah. have no proof. Mm, you can't say, oh, yeah, yeah. this is like, what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to send you, like, a, I don't know, like, an <laughs> invoice or, like, a receipt of, oh, yeah, I did buy this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of like, that trust. there's a trust. Yeah. That they're going to use it for yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a trust there that you have to kind of take a leap, leap of faith on. Um, yeah. And to be honest, I think that that's probably what connects us, really. Mm, Just yeah. that trust. So, so I want to just finish on, finish with these, I think it's the last five minutes, five, three minutes. Um, it's a verse from the Bible, Matthew, Matthew chapter six, verses three and four. Jesus said to uh, people on the Sermon on the Mount, when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So I want to say, did you do you feel like this film, Klaus, managed to do justice in depicting the importance of secretive good deeds? And did it kind of and do the Bible verses that inspire <clears throat> that inspired the original Saint Nicholas kind of resonate with you in any way in that sense? Mm, yeah, I think the film did do it justice because even though like it was like the main good deed was giving kids presents, it had a knock on effect to everything else. Mm. So it really did like sort of give that wider blessing to everyone else from that one mm. good deed. So yeah, I think it did sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there was the importance of it not being like um, so public that it was mm. Klaus, mm-hmm. that it was him. He just wanted to be humble. Mm. And he did it more out of like memory of his wife as well and his want for kids. But he kept that to himself. Like yeah. he wasn't like, This is my story and I really want to do good because of it. Mm-hmm. He just wanted to give. And so I think that definitely resonated. Um Yeah. And there was it wasn't like he was doing it for some gain, like, mm-hmm. let me show you all that I'm doing for the poor or whatnot. Like yeah. nowadays. I think it's amazing what celebrities are doing and giving to the public. It's like, you don't have to film it and record it and post it. Like, this yeah. is somebody's life. You can just be selfless and not tell anybody mm-hmm. about it because then you, it becomes... It's not selfless. Mm-hmm. You want the props, like, for someone to go, well done, you've done good, mm-hmm. or whatnot. So I think it is. It has more meaning when it is secretive or... Mm-hmm. Not secretive, you're just hum- humble and modest about it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Because Klaus wasn't completely secretive. Everyone didn't know it was him. Yeah. yeah. But it was just like it wasn't for his own his own esteem, basically. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't own. like, you will know this is from me. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. it was yeah. like, okay, do you want it? You're requesting it. All right, there you go. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I think it did it him justice. I think it did the original St. Nicholas justice. And that's, that's one reason why I do want to show that film to my kids, because then it would make sense. As in like, oh, this is where... Santa Claus has stemmed from yeah this this whole yeah. giving in secret yeah. kind of thing um, giving for the sake of giving not necessarily giving because you're going to gain something from it yeah, yeah. I think that's important yeah because like even on. yeah because even the kids it's just sort of like oh my gosh I'm going to do this good deed and I'm going to get the toys that I need mm. but not yeah. knowing that Santa's actually like being very selfless as well mm-hmm. he's not just giving like mm. everything yeah. out just mm. to everyone he's actually like humble mm. and that's the way you need to be mm. and, yeah yeah and i think i think that's um he's living by i think that kind of character lives by its leads and lives by example so if that person uh that person let's say klaus 
is giving for the sake of just the fact that he wants to see joy in um, kids. Uh, kids Basically, those kids will grow up knowing that that's happened to them, so then they would want to go above yeah. and beyond with that. Mm-hmm. And what just popped into my head, one guy, um, an old man as well, uh, he used to give me and my sister like a load of... He used to give sweets out. Basically, mm-hmm. he used to give sweets and snacks and all that stuff out. Like, me working in school now, what c- comes into my head safeguarding, safeguarding, is the <laughs> safeguarding, all that stuff. Yeah. But when I actually think about what he's done, like he always just wanted to kind of just give us something. Not He didn't charge anything. He just mm. always wanted to give us yeah. some sweets or stuff like that to help out my mum yeah. or help out even yeah. just anyone around. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I don't even know his name. That's the thing. I, don't, I wouldn't be able to say I know his name. I know where he lived and I always have that kind mm, yeah. of memory of where he's lived and everyone knows him. I think people have mentioned his name and said, oh, yeah, he, gives me, he gave me sweets and he gave me sweets. And obviously it wasn't poison or anything like that because we're all still here. But it was just like stuff like that kind of, you don't realise how stuff like that and examples like that can have an effect on even me now. I'm just remembering it and feeling like... You don't realise that it's had that effect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think it is quite innate, intrinsic to, in, in us, in humans, to mm-hmm. want to give... Mm. And that just gets blinded by a lot for good reason oh. to protect ourselves. But it's like when I used to work with old people and I'd go and see them at home, so many of them would just want to make you a cup of tea and sit with them and talk to them. And yes, it's because they're lonely as well. It's like, I don't want this tea, but I'll let you make it because they just want to give. <laughs> yeah. They just want to know that they've done something, something to help you out or something like that. And I don't know if that's selfless or not or what, but people do genuinely just want to give to others and to be yeah. good, good people. You don't want to know that you are, well, some people are just bad, but you'd like to believe that you're a good person. Mm. Mm. I would say that I, what I do think is in it is the desire to share what you enjoy or yeah. to share in what you think life is about, I suppose, if yeah. that makes sense. There's always like a desire, innate desire to kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's just in us like, I don't know. At our age, when we watch something, I wanted to say, "Oh, you guys should watch this too." Da, da, da. It's yeah, not yeah, necessarily yeah. because everyone can gain. Yeah, so yeah. Any, anyone can. Yeah, so that you guys can enjoy just the way I did. Yeah. Um, not just oh, I watch it and no one else matters. It's because yeah. I wanted everyone to share in it. When you're younger, kind of like you want to play your toys with someone, with someone, or you want to show someone your toys and you want them to play with it. Yeah. Not necessarily because <laughs> you're getting enjoyment, but you want to share that enjoyment yeah. with them. Or you want them to experience that same thing. So I think that is innate in us. That has that become, yeah. share. as I've got older, even like with cooking sometimes, I won't even eat, but I want to like, mm-hmm. I want to feed people. That's mm-hmm. enough. Yeah, yeah, no, that is me. Or well. if I see a gift that I know is so someone, I have to get it. Even if it's your <laughs> birthday or something, yeah. I'm like, this, this is, is them and I know they're going to love it. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That is what it is. That is what it is. But um, since we're over the hour mark, I think we should end here unless any of you guys have anything else to to say yeah well that's that and we'll see you in the new year yes (laughs) 2020 in the next decade in the next decade that's great have a good new year happy new year happy new year yeah that didn't sound too (laughs) enthusiastic yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know what might as well good new year (laughs) all right oh